I have a day with and a week with. It's all of the whole book of Mark, of uh, Colossians actually, but I want to share, um, how shall I say, some other scripture that I also got in my heart. If you will go with me to Mark 12. Verse 24, about the resurrection, Jesus replied, Are you not in error, because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When the dead rise, they will neither marry or be given in marriage. And then, last verse in that paragraph, I am the God of Abram and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. You are badly mistaken. Mistaken in what sense? In not understanding the resurrection. God is the God of the living. And I say, my brother, my sister, yes. As they are alive, so we are alive in Christ Jesus. And it's all about, yes, we, when we look at the whole weekend, celebrating what Christ has done for us on the cross, we say we've been crucified with Christ, we died with Christ, buried with Christ, being raised with Christ, seated with Christ in heavenly places. And in that place our life is hidden with Christ and hidden in Christ. And the more we come to know Christ, the more we will understand how to have an excellent life with eternal quality. But only if I understand who I am in Christ, Christ in me, and how I'm crucified with Christ then I will understand who's the resurrected Christ living in me. The resurrected Christ living in me. Is it not Romans 8, 11 that says now if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead is living in you, how much more, how much more, how much more will he quicken your mortal bodies to live for him? To live for him. Now if I have respect for Jesus that calls himself, I am the resurrection and the life, John 11. Now I say, yes, I honor him as the resurrected life. And how must I live then in this resurrection life? What are we talking about in, in a practical way? When I'm crucified with Christ, my selfish love, my concept of love, my lustful love, my self-centered love died with Christ. And that self-centered love was buried and died. What was raised with Christ is the love of God in me. Hello, hello. But my stress, my anxiety, my selfish love, my, my rubbish died with Christ on the cross. But great praise God in the resurrected Christ as I'm raised with him is his perfection. The perfection of heaven is living in me. It's called Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Perfect love in me. And that love has resurrection power because he is called the resurrection and the life, but he's also called love. So whoever, whatever God is called in the word, that in resurrection power is in me. So what are we talking about? The resurrection power of love is in me. Love beyond death. Death that has no sting. Death that has no authority anymore. There's a destructive power, a destructive death that can take you forever to go and burn in hell. But praise God that our death in Christ, death on the cross, protect us against destructive death into eternity. We have the saying, die against destruction. When I've died with Christ, life cannot destroy me. My death on the cross protect me against destruction in life. Because the selfish love that died on the cross, that selfish love and lust going to destroy me. It's going to destroy me. That's why the word says, the word of the cross is the power of God. 
There is no access to the power of God only through the cross. Only through the death of myself in Christ with Christ. Hello? Are you with me? No peace that can rule. Peace as a resurrected power in me. Through the resurrected power of peace, I will conquer. And the destructive power of stress, the destructive power of anxiety must bow before the power of, a, of peace through the resurrected life in my spirit. Hello? And peace will rule against the destructive power of stress. Are you still here? Peace that transcends all understanding. I don't understanding. I don't understand how can I have peace? Because based on right and wrong, I have this issue with this guy. I have this stress. I have this thing. I have this issue with myself. But the resurrected power that is living in me, I, as I'm raised with Christ, the new John, the new Peter, the new Hannah. Anna, whoever you, your, and whoever and whatever your name is, that resurrected one, the power beyond hell, the power beyond death is in you, is in you. That resurrected power beyond the power of fear is in you. Hello? So when you walk in that thing and in that fear, say that fear is crucified. That fear is crucified with Christ. Crucified with Christ. Amen. Are you still here? I want to go a little bit further in this scripture. When you're talking about God, he's the God of the, of the living. Just after that, talking about the greatest commandment, verse 29. But the most important one, Jesus answered, is this. Hear, O Israel. Everybody say, hear. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. The Lord our God. The Lord is our God. The Lord is one. There's only one. There's only one. You decide who will be the one. If, you th if stress is the most in your life, then... Stress, your God, is one. That's the one that will rule. And he, that stress will determine the greatest commandment. The God you call God will determine the greatest commandment. The God of I'm right, he's wrong. The, the God of justification. The God of um, double-heartedness. The God of religion where you are in a religious mode. You know the ropes. You know how to do the things that you're supposed to do. But you are wara wara I don't know what other English word for that. All around the place. You just, add, you added some Christianity to you, to your walk. And that is your God, that, that demon of compromise. The Lord, your God, that is called compromise, he is God. And the greatest commandment will be, you will compromise. You are compromised to God. You are compromised to yourself. You are compromised to your brother and sister. Instead of the greatest commandment, love the Lord your God. Then love your neighbor as you love yourself. Compromise or compromising with God. You are compromising with the excellent dream that God has for your own life. And you will compromise in how you are supposed to relate with brothers and sisters around you. That's the way it will be. But by the grace of God, say, God... Today I want to say you alone are oh God. You are the one. There's no one else. There's going to be no one else. And you look at your life and the enemy says, yeah, 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 yeah. First of all, you declare it with your mouth. You declare it life and death in the power of the tongue, not as a trick, as a principle. You declare the life. You declare the life. You will fight through the word of God. Amen. Double-edged sword through your mouth. And you will cut what is right, what is wrong, through the truth. Let it be so in Jesus' name. The Lord your God is one. It's gone. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
I want to say, I want to call out these four facets of how you must love the Lord with your heart, soul, all your mind, all your strength. And the four words, I want to give it, there's another 400 that you can give to it. But for today, I believe that is the facet that we're looking at. <clears throat> to love the Lord with all your heart. With the word heart, you can write there dreams or write it down somewhere. Heart, dreams. Love the Lord your God with all your dreams. You know, from your heart comes all the dreams. Your, guard your heart more than anything else. And where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. What is your treasure? That what you dream about. That what is the most important because with the most important, you're going to get somewhere. If you're not going to go anywhere with this most important, you will not call it the most important. The most important is to work hard so that there's financial security. The most important is that I must get this right. I must f find this strategy. Okay, is that the most important your heart is in your strategy. Your heart is not in God. You don't dream through your strategy. You don't dream through your abilities. You don't dream through your intellect, your capacity. You don't dream through your circumstances. You don't dream through your success. You dream alone with God, heart to heart. What is the dream in the heart of the Father? What is the dream in the heart of the Father? Because that's my dream also. And that is through a resurrected life. So if I dream with the Father, the word says, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And like we said a hundred times, now how is that possible that God so loved the world and then other places more than 10, 20, 30 times, he says, hate the world, turn your back on the world, run from the world, let the world be dead to you and you are dead to the world. Oh, now what now? Like we said, God is talking about his dream, his dream world in his heart. There's a world born in his heart. You are born in the heart of the Father. Remember to say that when they ask you, where were you born? I was born in the heart of the Father. I arrived in Potsdam, or I arrived in Bloemfontein, but I was born in the heart of the Father. Okay, remember that? Okay, second one. If from that place you were born, hello? From that place you will live. From that place you will live. And from that place, God so loved this dream world. He dreamt about you. He dreamt about me. He dreamt about this world and the crown of creation, you, and how you will have this awesome relationship with him and how you will walk with him. And for this dream world, for his dream, the father sent his son to sort out this hell of a mess that we created, this world we created on earth. On earth as in heaven as it is the dream world in your heart lord let it be so on earth through who through you and me why when you gave your life to christ you came back to the dream that father has for you you came back into a, a different realm you are in the world but not from the world let's say i'm in this world but not from this world because the god of this world is satan himself so I'm called into, with a calling into this world. Okay? And so when I pray, Father, on earth as it is in heaven, I am agents for God. We are ambassadors of Christ. We are the agents on earth. And through your prayer, you are the connection point for that what is in heaven to come down on earth. Because that's what Jesus said, how you pray. That you will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Our Father who are in heaven. That's your dream. To be called Father by the nations. Not hello what is your name. Hello. Like the child said. Hello would be thy name. Holy is thy name. Holy that means separated. Uncomparable. 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 The three million names that we can give you. Is uncomparable with anything else. Holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your authority, that what you have, because you are the almighty, you have the final say. Your kingdom come, and according to your dream, according to your character, according to who you are, according to your authority, on earth as it is in heaven. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. But you pray it through. 
Hell on earth and a chamor's world, a rubbish world. Why? Because the church is not praying on earth as the world is in heaven. The world that you so loved that you gave your only begotten son. That world that you are so excited about, that you dreamt about. Not the nightmare that we created on earth in destroying one another and creating just more and more mess. No, God, through prayer, the power, power, power connection point on earth for open heavens through prayer with faith. Hello? So that in your life, through your life, the world that will be created by God in you, through you, will be as it is in heaven. What is God saying about the, the politics? What is God saying about Bluefoot? What is God saying about the nation? The season that we are living in, the intimidation, the rubbish, the education system. What is God saying all about it? On earth, in the schools, as it is in heaven. How God dreamt about the schools. Through who? How, how will it happen? No, the government, rubbish. The church. The church that cannot pray. In the school, as you dreamt about this school. In Bloemfontein, as you dreamt about Bloemfontein, when you created all the people in Bloemfontein to, to, to form a community that they will call Bloemfontein. What do you dream about the city, Lord? What do you dream about engineering? What do you dream about education? What do you dream about business? But let's wara wara and don't pray that, that you must pray that God must come and sort out all the stuff that we create, all the chamors so many times. I sought out the success where my heart and my dream is based on my success. Not anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. So God's going to help you. God's going to help me on earth as it is in heaven according to your dream, Father. Because you have a master dream. And for that you died. And we have the privilege, privilege, privilege for to be the connection point for that awesome dream from our Father to become a reality in and through our lives. So that in Christ, in Christ we can say, like Christ said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father, Jesus said. And you are called in Him, and Him in you. In the same way, the world needs to see the Father. They need to see the perfect Father that so awesomely, awesomely loves them. Where? Through your life. May God help you. May God help me. Amen. You are still here. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your dreams from that place where all the dreams come from. And with all your soul. With all your mind, with all your strength. I want to say with all your soul. I want to call it dominance. All your soul. All the dominance. Soul wants to be in control. Finished. The guys out there in the world, psychiatrists, psychologists, and psy psychics, and whatever you want to call them, they say the biggest thing is survival. To survive and to have this land, to survive, I will kill 2 million. We will kill 14 million in a world war. Why? For the survival of my nation, for my patriotism, for that what I stand for. To survive, I will slaughter. If it's baby, if it's wife, if it's grandpa, if it's grandma, we will slaughter them. If it's a slow death, if it's whatever type of death, doesn't matter for survival. For the dominance, I will dominate this region. I will be in control. No, we will be in control. We will dominate everything. We've seen that Russia, Ukraine, and so another hundred wars of the past in history. So wants to dominate and so want to dominate the essence of who you really are you are a spirit recreated in jesus through jesus christ by the power of the spirit amen into perfection everything became new in your spirit we say that a hundred times amen that makes you different than the baboon. So be the baboon. He wants to control. He wants to be in control. So, and whatever animal they will slaughter, they will, they will kill as long as they survive. That's how he's set up out there. But you are more than that. You are so more than that. So your soul must be submitted to your, to your spirit because 
You are not called to survive. You're not supposed to preserve life and try to be protected against death. Somewhere death must work for you. And you must not run from death because death, where is your sting through the resurrection power of God? You have nothing on me except, except if I give death authority over me. When you give death authority over you, you have the destructive power of death over you. Because when you walk in that stress, stress will be a destructive power in you. And this, that destructive power in you will fight, fight against the peace that is in you. You will not have peace. But I will control you. I will be your God. This stress, this fear will be God. Finished. And if I'm your God, I will give you the commandment. Me, your God, that is called fear. And I will say, this is the way that you will work. So that you don't have fear because there's enough money. Instead of God is your God. And God, you provide in everything. But what is the way that you want me to live as a child of you, as the Father that provides in everything? Oh. But how will we deal with the fear? The opposite. The resurrected power of love. Love will drive out all fear. The resurrected power of love in you will drive out all fear. The resurrected power of peace will drive out all stress. The resurrected power of joy the, that will be your strength against that discouragement, that tiredness. Hello? So in ev every one of those facets, patience against, we didn't find a name. Against unpatience. What is the different temper? The temper and the, that type of thing. Short of wire. What is Kort van der in Engels? Short tempered. Something, something like that. Are you with me? Okay. That is just for you to remember. Okay. So please. In all those attributes of who God is, is the resurrected power of Christ. I've laid down that rubbish temper, that, that chamorse of stress and fear. It's crucified with Christ. It died. And what was raised with Christ was His patience, His love, His joy. Whoever and whatever He is, in that I'm resurrected. But you can be, you're not going to be. But the fool will do what? The fool will walk in that compromise. And compromise is your God. And therefore you will love compromise. You love it. You're okay with it. Sunday you're like this. And in front of certain people and parents and whoever. You're like this. But when you're alone on your phone. Or you're alone with this, these guys. Then this is the sick talk. And this hwara hamors talk. And, and words and jokes. And, and then you're okay. Why? You must know the Lord, your God, is compromised. It's not Jesus Christ. It's not Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And all demons in hell laugh at you. Let them laugh. Because that you decide that's your God. And therefore, you will be faithful to that. You will love it. You will love the compromise. But you know, it's not just first compromise towards God. You think you compromise because you do the stuff. You're compromising your relationship with God. And then you compromise towards yourself. That you're not willing to give yourself this excellent life with an excellent destiny, with an excellent dream from Father God. No, you compromise that what you could have. And that's why you compromise with people. When you see you compromise with people, you fake with this one, and then you're more like that, and then you with this one, you are like that because... You're not faithful to the awesome resurrected life that is in you. You don't know what is given to you. You don't know what God has given you. Therefore, you find people, they only pray for their needs. They only pray for this. Lord, uh, please let these uh, stones be turned into bread. Do a miracle and provide for me, please, Lord. Okay, that was the first temptation from the devil for you to pray just that. So he, the devil can lead you into prayer. 
He can really lead you into prayer. <laughs> but just to pray for your bread. But God says you must pray for your daily bread. Yes, that's to bring yourself in an attitude of dependencies. I declare I will be dependent on you, Lord. That's why you prayed. It's not like you prayed and because you didn't pray yesterday, for, therefore today you will have no bread. No. It's a declaration of I position myself before you to be dependent on you. That's why God said, give us today our daily bread. This and this, because you shall not live by bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, this bread you will eat. Amen. Are you still here? Okay, well, was uns nicht now. Okay. Auntie so, yes, okay. So, so my brother, my sister, if compromise or that lust or that chamorce, you talk with somebody else, you have this type of image on your phone. But it's actually a demonic image. You are messing up your own life. You're busy with the destructive death that will work in you, but there's a resurrected power in you, but you're working with a destructive death in you because you love and you're addicted. You're addicted to this remorse. You're addicted to this compromise. Let's get out of that. Let's get out of that because you will put your heart into that, your dreams into that. You will put, that thing will dominate you. We're talking about soul. That compromise will dominate, dominate your soul. That fear will dominate. That anxiety will dominate. That lust will dominate. That, re that religion will dominate you instead of God. When you love him with all your soul, when you love that chamorz, that chamorz will dominate your soul. Will dominate your soul. Are you still here? Resurrection power must dominate. Hello? That is when you love the Lord with all your so, all your heart, the dreams will not be from hell. The dream will not be, if I someday have this and I have that, then I will. Yes, dream with God. But as long as you dream with God. But otherwise, this dream is in money, gierigheid. Is in uh, greed. Geld, gierigheid. Is in, in this greed. And the greed is not just the problem of, oh, I want more money. No, it's this dreaming with this money thing that that is the solution. When you have this money, then you can. No, when you have God and you have his guidance, you have this walk with God, then you have everything. And God will surprise you and money will work for you and death will work for you because death has no sting. The death of your flesh is gain. Life is Christ, die is gain. Death of your flesh is gain. Amen. Let it be so. Love the Lord with all your heart, your dreams, with all your soul, the dominance, the control, with all your mind. With all your mind, all your thoughts. The love the Lord with your thoughts. Think what he thinks about. What is God thinking about business? What is he thinking about the education system? What is he thinking about the education system? Hello. You can use the name of Jesus in school as long as you use it as a swear word. As long as you use it to curse someone, then you can use the name of Jesus in the school. But when you use it with respect and say that you love him and tell others that he loves them also, then you're in a hell of a lot of trouble. How sick is the system? Now we speak that in future... In the name of Jesus Christ, education, God will be in control. Who will pray that? The church. On earth, on earth, in the schools, as it is in heaven. As you dreamt about it. As you gave your everything for a world to be lived out in a, in a place that in education you will come and make your home. You are welcome in education. Lord, because you are welcome in the schools. Because in every school there is at least two or three or four. And you will not destroy that school under the curse. Because there is at least two, three or four that stand in your name. And through their prayer as a connection point for that school from heaven. In the school as it is in heaven. 
in this business as it is in heaven, in this city, in this politics as it is in heaven. Politics in heaven. <clears throat> God's rule, God's wisdom must be there. Yes, Mr. Joseph, you better get in there. Even if it's through your brothers and your sister must sell you as a slave, and this one must do that, and then you must be faithful, and still uh, your boss believes the lie and fire you and throw you in jail, and still you have not a rotten, fraught attitude. You are still there with God. Hello? And from that place, with a revelation alive in you, you move from the jail to the throne room, and not in the throne room you have you are given authority. In the jail, you had the same amount of authority. And because you had the authority and the character and the integrity and the sensitive in this sensitivity in the spirit in jail, you, you just changed address. You didn't get more authority. You just expressed what was in your heart. When you expressed it in the jail, you expressed it in the palace. So don't dream about a palace as an opportunity. Dream about you. Rising up, growing up, maturing, that it all will, all about, will be about him. There where you are, be faithful, be faithful with a little. And just like this, boom, God will take you in tomorrow. But that what you think is little is not little. Mr. Philip, when, when you are taken, choo, on the transport, what, what did you do? You had to leave the success. You had to go on the lonely road so that the gospel through a very important from a fish, a very important official from Ethiopia so that the gospel will go to Africa. Stop what you're doing. Mr. Deacon that was watched all the old aunties come and go this lonely road and just explain to this one guy what it's all about in Isaiah. Baptize the man. And there he goes, and the gospel goes to Africa through that deacon. Other deacon, yeah, he's too big mouth. Just to speak the whole everything. Who the freak do you think you are? We are the Pharisees, these apostles, but you're supposed to watch the aunties. Go back. Speak, 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 speak until they cannot take it because of the revelation and religion. A religion manifests against relationship. Let's say that religion manifests against relationship and against revelation. So when this man that must, must watch the aunties, he, he stands up and what the passion in his heart, that what he believes and how he loves God with his mind, his heart and everything, he shares the word. But religion manifests against what they saw, against the revelation, against this revela this relationship this man had. They had to stone him, and when they stoned him, it was an opportunity for him to pray for a key guy, a key person that will write two-thirds of the New Testament. And this deacon that was much watched the old aunties while the stones are raining, raining down, he prays for the man there. God, forgive them. Forgive them. And the man, man in charge was so... And two chapters further, he became Paul, and then he wrote us two-thirds of all the letters in the New Testament. Are you still here? What type of capacity, with what type of passion do you walk out there? May God help you. May God help you that you walk with a resurrection power that is in you. Amen. Love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your dreams, with all your soul, God's control, God's dominance in my life with all your mind all your thoughts it's all your thoughts amen we talked about that and then lastly with all your strength all your strength it's all about his power and all the strength is your capacity of what you can do in the sense of I can give me a crack for it no it's not by power nor by might but by my spirit the spirit so whatever power you have whatever strength you have Use it for his glory. Let his love be the driving force. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5. The love of God compels us, will drive us. Let the love of God be the compelling force. Let the love of God be that strength in you. How will I use my strength? I need to have strength today because there's a crisis and suddenly... You have the strength and you say, God, give me the strength to, to deal with this crisis. Because 
suddenly when people have this fear, they can just do amazing things. You know, we call that in the physical adrenaline, ne? doctor, adrenaline. And that adrenaline is just coming through. My grandma and the Afrikaner bears, ooh, the Afrikaner bull, that was the, the not the beast, the cows. <laughs> hey? The cows and the bull. And the, uh, that Afrikaner bull, was, he, that thing had an attitude always. I don't know why they call it like that. And my grandmother, she walked like this. She was quite visible, let me say like that. And she walked like this. And the Afrikaner bull came. And when the Afrikaner bull came, within two seconds, she went over the, the fence. Pew! My grandfather wasn't concerned. He just laughed. Woo! -woo. She didn't walk in patience then. <laughs> but <laughs> that adrenaline. Now my brother, my sister, the adrenaline, the adrenaline must be the love of God in your heart. That must determine the amount of strength you have. Not the crisis and suddenly you put everything in that last round to get out of the crisis, out of the thing. You create, were created in such a way that God's love can be the driving force. God's love can be the strength in you. So with your strength, God, I'm going to love you. What are you saying? I'm not driven by the, the crisis. I'm not driven by the fear. But where are you in this challenge? We have no crisis. We have only challenges. So in this challenge that we need to face, where and how must I be driven by your, your love? How must I love you in the midst of this challenge? How must I love you in the midst of this circumstance? How must I love you in the midst of this feeling just negative and all this stuff coming against me. How can you do that? Because you were raised, raised, raised. Everybody say raised. raised. With Christ from death. From the biggest destructive power that could hold you back. That biggest, strongest destructive power that had authority over mankind. Jesus overcame. Jesus overcame. He was raised from the dead because he died the perfect lamb. He died the perfect lamb. Remember what we said. It wasn't the devil that took Jesus to the cross. It wasn't the devil. There's some teaching about that. That's not the truth. It wasn't the devil that wanted to uh, kill him. The devil wanted him to be the imperfect lamb. As it worked with Adam, that he failed. He he disobeyed God. So the temptation on the cross, ah, if you're the son of God, come down. If you're the son of God, come down. All the mocking, all the that. So that Jesus must react. He cannot die the perfect lamb. Then we and all of hell are in trouble. So when he said, it is finished, he went over the finishing line. The battle was won. Scripture said, in the spirit it was won in Gethsemane. And then he walked it out in the flesh until he said, it is finished. Into your hands I commit my spirit because I, uh, I'm not in a place I'm the loser and the devil won. No. I present myself as the perfect lamb unto you, Lord. That what you've called me to do here on earth, I succeeded in it. And even into death, he obeyed God as a servant. Obeyed even unto death. So Satan tried everything for him not to die as the perfect lamb. So even when he said, God forgive them for they don't know what they do. He didn't see the father that wanted to destroy and kill and slaughter everyone. Because he only said what the father was saying. Jesus said, I will only speak what the father is speaking. I will only do what the father is doing. The Father is crucifying his own heart. And that's the expression that I'm showing you. He bruised and he crucified his own heart. His own son. That's what he explained. He would not do it if the Father wasn't doing it. He would not say if the Father does not say. 
So, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. Is an expression of, I'm praying that for mankind. I'm praying that for the guys sitting today here. I'm praying for the nations of today. Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. Because if you don't have the word of God, if Holy Spirit didn't open it up, you don't know what you are doing. And unfortunately, we are many times foolish. We don't know what we do because we don't allow the Spirit to open up the word. <sighs> We must know what we are doing, and that is in obedience and by faith. If we don't understand what we many times do, and God will make sure you don't understand His will many times, because then you will have, you will dominate, you will be in control, you will be in control. He will make sure that many times you will not understand. You can throw a tantrum to understand because you're praying so that you can be in control. If I understand, I will do. If God, you must just say, God, if I'm in control, then I will do. But God loves it when you, the righteous, must walk by faith. Amen. You're still here. I know the time is nearly up. I explained to them in the Bible, if we are biblical, we're supposed to even preach the whole day until somebody fall out of a window because they fell asleep. And then we just go and I just say, sorry, guys, just wait a minute. Just go. Raise him from the dead. Come back. Then everybody listened to the sermon. It wasn't the end of the sermon when the guy was raised from the dead. It was, they went on. Hello. But don't fear. The end is near. <laughs> okay. Are we still here? Oh, man, everything is going. <laughs> With all your soul, all your mind, all your thoughts, all your dreams all your strength, all the control. And secondly, then, if you understand that God has the control, God has the dominance over my emotions. God has the control. God is the one with my heart. I will dream with him, with my thought, with my thoughts, with my soul. I will, I will think what he is thinking. I will do what he is doing with the strength that he provides. Then, with that, you love yourself. I will love you, Lord, in this way. I will lay it down. But then, when looking at myself, I will not have my thoughts. But if I can sort out myself to have my thoughts about my life, who are you in Christ? You have the right thoughts about God, then you better get the right thoughts about yourself. Because otherwise, you're going to believe a lot of rubbish about the people around you. If you have the issues about yourself, then you will have issues with the people. If you have issues with people and you're oversensitive with people and you easily put them in boxes, that's just a description of because of you having issues with yourself and too much opinions about yourself and too many, many struggles with yourself. That's why you have struggles with people. You cannot blame the people. It's just an expression of what's happening in your heart. That's what's happening out there is because of what's happening in your heart. But if you can receive the perfection, the resurrected life from above, and you sort out yourself, then you can love your neighbor without controlling them, without having to dominate them, without having to be the one that is always the cleverest. But sometimes you can acknowledge, hey, that was a stupid idea. And don't feel rejected. Are you with me? Then you can dream with God about that man, about that woman, and be excited about the dream that God has for that man and that man, because you love the Lord with all your heart. You and God dream together about his dream. You and God dream together about what is in your heart and what is his dream for others around you with a resurrected life, that when you dream and you pray the dream for somebody else, you're praying according to, according to the resurrected power that is in you. That is in you. Are you still here? Ah, please just say something. You are still here. So if Christ was raised from the dead through the Holy Spirit, and you are raised with him and you are seated with him in heavenly places, then you look down. Remember you look down at your challenges. 
when you're seated in heavenly places with Christ, you're facing a challenge, you don't look up to a mountain, that's in the physical, you feel. But seated in heavenly places, you look down at your success, down at your failures, down at your disappointments, down at your stress, down at your fear. You look down into your challenges, down into your facility, your financial intimidations. You look down and say, God, what must we do about that? Next time when you pray about those things, please do something. Point down to that thing. God, what must I do with this financial challenge? What must I do with this weakness in my life? With this thing that I feel and will never overcome? What must I do with this fear? This fear in my soul. Because in me, in my spirit, there is no fear. But please, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Me from my spirit in you with me, Lord. What are we going to do about this fear in my soul? Put the right thing in the right place as it is really. You know? You want to kill the, uh, the, 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 the snake, but you cannot even place him in the right place of know where he is. No, it's over here. the snake is all over the farm. So any place where you go, the snake is there. No. The snake is, let me not speak it. The snake is under that tree somewhere. What are you going to do? You're going to walk with the, with the right tools. You're going to go to the right place. You're going to identify the snake. You're going to slaughter him there. So identify you with your perfect spirit, with the Holy Spirit, speaking in your spirit, with the fullness of God dwelling in your spirit, where everything became new, with God in heavenly places, Identify in my soul. God, in my soul, not in me, in my soul, that fear, that stress, that intimidation, that slavery, it wants to destroy me. Forgive me for obeying that rubbish. I want to obey you. How can we, how must we do it, Lord, where you conquered everything and I'm more than a conqueror with you, in you, and you in me. How must we face this financial challenge? You are still here. God help us. We trust you, Lord. Pray for every man and woman in this place that need this break. I pray in their hearts they will rise above. Rise above that fear. Rise above that anxiety. Rise above that challenge, Lord. That they will understand the resurrected power that is in them. How they've died with Christ and all that rubbish died with Christ. God, we're buried with Christ. And the beauty of who you are, in that beauty we were raised. To be seated with you, Lord. Give us your perspective from the heavenlies. And that in heavenly places we will look down into our situation. And not look up at our success as our God, Lord. Not running for success as the answer. But that success, death, whatever will work for the good. As we learn how to love you. Learn how to love you. With a resurrected life. Resurrected love. That deal with the destructive power of fear. Show us every facet of who you are, Lord. And how to align that against destructive powers is destructive thought patterns working in us we walk away from that and i pray that for every man and woman in this place that they will walk away from that father please we ask that in jesus name and all say amen amen